From the Jake Lindsay Studios in Warrington, England, this is Series 3 of the Jake Lindsay Show! Now, here he is, the man himself, Jake Lindsay! Welcome one and all to Series 3 of the Jake Lindsay Show! So, what's happened this week? Matt Hancock forgets how to say goodbye on national television. It's very good to have me on, thank you very much. There was the Louis Theroux cake on the Great British Bake Off. And Blackpool saw a record attendance after its exemption from lockdown. What have I got on the show for you this week? I'll be talking to the creative director of Crosby-based Christian charity in another place, Annie Spears, about what the group have been getting up to during lockdown. And I'll be welcoming the North West and North Wales branches of the UK Rock Choir to take to the stage to perform Bridge Over Trouble Water by Simon and Garfunkel. The big issue, yeah. My big issue for this week is that I'm going to be co-hosting on Radio Warrington. Radio Warrington is a radio station manned by volunteers that broadcast from Warrington Market every single day of the week. I'm going to be working on Saturday Sport with James Little, every Saturday from 2 o'clock until 5 o'clock. You can listen on 13.32am on digital radio. You can use your smart speaker to listen on TuneIn Radio, and you can listen on www.radiowarrington.co.uk. Hope to see you there! This week's guest. This week's guest is one of the most inspirational women I've ever had the chance to work alongside. She's a creative director of Crosby based Christian charity in another place. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Annie Spears! Hello, Annie. Hello, nice to uh, see you. So, how are you finding this so called new normal? Uh, a little bit strange. I've had a very interesting time actually during lockdown because two of my children got married. Um, with little tiny weddings, because that's all that was allowed, um, within a week of each other, can you believe it? So that was interesting. Um, as far as in another place goes, we've had quite a lot of things online, um, and we're just beginning to get back into our base in Bootlestrand now. What's it been like to be in a high up position in another place, because you're in charge of whether services have gone ahead or not? Yes. Um, well, we had to think quite quickly at the beginning because obviously lockdown happened quite quickly, didn't it? So I'm, I'm not on my own in making decisions. So we have a group of trustees and uh, we had to make a decision quite quickly that we couldn't go ahead with Liverpool Passion. So that was our biggest event that was planned on Good Friday. Um, and that was going to be retelling the Easter story um, in Liverpool city centre in William Brown Street, just by St George's Hall. Um, so we had to sadly postpone that when we were only two weeks away from putting it on. Uh, so that was a bit agonising, but it was the only way to do it. Um, but as I say, that wasn't just my decision, that was us as trustees. Um, and then after that, it became obvious that we couldn't do the other productions that we were planning over the summer. So we were planning to do Alice in Retroland, a new production in Bootlestrand. We were planning to um, do a big production in Liverpool Cathedral for school children, um, which we'd done the last couple of years, uh, their school leavers service. So that was cancelled. Um, and various other things that we were going to do on a smaller scale. So although um, I'm sort of the, well, I'm the creative director, it's never just my decision what happens, which is a relief because it would be a bit of a big responsibility just on my own. I know you also had another sponsored walk planned out after the success of walking the lengths of Hadrian's Wall with Jenny in 2017. Would you uh, talk about what you were going to do? Yes. Jenny and I were going to go to London um, and walk along across all the bridges on the River Thames through the middle of London. Um, I think it was a, an 18 mile walk or a 25 mile walk, I can't remember, um, in one day. So we were going to do that. Um, but then again, because of lockdown, we couldn't do that. So then 
inspired by my children who play frisbee and they had been doing some virtual walks where they'd added up their daily exercise to go a long way to somewhere else to another country um we thought oh maybe we could do that so instead of going to london and actually walking we could do a virtual walk from liverpool to london and we could not just us but maybe we could see if some of the other in another place team want to do this this was back in may when we were only allowed one bit of daily exercise so we'd add up our miles each day and um we thought let's go a funny way via bristol and then my parents run a zoo in bristol so we could visit their zoo on a zoom call and my brother who runs it now he could take a video of some of the animals and talk to us about them so we did that and we got to london in four days and we thought actually it's quite fun um why don't we keep going so we thought well because it's, we're only pretending we could go to france we could get a pretend boat <laughs> which won't cost us anything because it's not real and we'll go to paris and then we'll go my eldest daughter lives near geneva in an abbey by a lake so we'll go and wow. visit her so um by the time we got to hannah's abbey in geneva we had 30 of us were walking and um so then we all thought well this is quite fun shall we keep going <laughs> so we kept going and then jake i did go a little bit bonkers and i decided that i would do some dances have you seen on facebook yes so i i did my first one was yodeling up the mountains in switzerland um and then i persuaded my husband to sing edelweiss with me in austria um with a bit of dressing up as well and then i ended up doing learning lots of different dances in lots of different countries the next bit and we carried on and on and on and right now we've just visited hong kong in fact we visited taiwan yesterday and we're on our way to japan we have visited about 60 countries and walked nearly 14,000 miles wow and there's over 60 people walking with us now and talking of singing and dancing, what's it been like not being able to sing in church? Really sad. Well, we haven't even been able to go to church, have we, until recently. Um, I miss singing. I love singing and, and I love going to church. So I've done church on Zoom um, or church online. My church normally does it on YouTube. Um, and I've been to a few, quite a few other churches, actually, and that's been quite nice, um, either on through Facebook Live or YouTube or uh, or something else. So it's been quite nice sometimes to go to churches in other countries, but just from your sitting room <laughs> or in other cities. Um, so that's been a, a good thing about it. And of course, when you're just singing with your computer, then you can sing. Um, and our choirs have been able to sing as well. So there has been some singing, but I do, I do miss singing with other people in, in a church service as a worship. I do love that. For us doing all that, I know that you run an activity around Beautiful Strand called the Snail Trail. What's all that about? Well, you may know that I'm very keen on recycling. And one thing that we've started recycling a lot is socks. Because when you think about it, everybody's got odd socks or socks with holes in, and what can you do with socks with holes in or odd socks? Not very much. So I made, can you see here, this chair. This is a, a chair cover, not very good light, made of socks. And then I thought, let's have a treasure hunt. I'm just getting let's have a treasure hunt uh, for the kids in the school holidays around Bootle Strand we were going to do an easter egg hunt and made some giant cardboard easter eggs uh, at easter time but of course that couldn't happen because of covid so we thought let's make some snails out of socks so can you see this one yes so these were my very most favorite socks 
which were like posh woolly ones which had sadly gone completely through on the toes and the heels and but I'd kept hold of them because I loved them and so I thought maybe I can make them into a snail shell and then the snail body is made from some woolly tights and stuffed and so we made lots of snails like that and some smaller ones also made from socks and we went round to all the shops who were going to do the Easter egg hunt back at Easter egg at Easter time and said would they like to take part in the snail trail and 20 of them signed up and then the idea was um, we worked with a little coffee shop in the Strand and kids just had to collect a form from the coffee shop and fill in the names of all the shops where they could find a snail and the snail trail poster in their shop window and we had lots of entries and very happily we announced a winner the other day a, a boy called Jack so he is going to be able to bring three people with him and have a Mad Hatter tea party with the with the actual Mad Hatter and March Hare in Bootle Strand. So is that cool? Yes, that's very cool. Obviously the March Hare and the Mad Hatter come from the Alice in Wonderland production. When do you think productions will be able to go back ahead again? Well, that is the million dollar question, Jake. And of course, you you were in Alice, weren't you? A yes, tweet yeah. with Ted and a number of our other productions as well. Um, well, limited numbers in productions are legally allowed to go ahead now. So what we've been planning, we haven't broadcast this, so this will be a, a news to you and your listeners. Um, during lockdown, we came up with a new project, um, which is a Narnia escape room. Have you heard of escape rooms? Yes. <laughs> Do you like that idea? So basically there will be um, a room that you have to escape from, but you will, our added bonus is that there will be some actors involved as well. So Mrs. Beaver will come and find you and say, help, Mr. Tumnus has been arrested. I've gone to his house. I can't get in the door. It's locked and I need to rescue him. Will you come and help me? find a way to rescue him and then the the little group will go in with Mrs Beaver and work out lots of clues and puzzles in order to rescue Mr Tumnus before it's too late and we have got two other escape rooms that are beginning to be developed as well one one uh, World War Two and another one called Kings and Giant Slayers so, but Narnia, we hope, is going to be open from October half term. And so you could be one of the first bookings, if you want, Jake, or anyone listening this, to this. We're, we are um, building a rough prototype in the unit at the moment. And then we will we'll be able to advertise it as, as soon as we've tested it out uh, in the next few weeks. And, um, Where will it be? It will be in Bootle Strand. And um, it will be um, open to groups of up to five people um, because then it fits in with social distancing and obviously people either will be from the same household or they'll be able to be distant from each other. So that's one thing that we hope will go ahead despite everything. We also hope that the um, Bootlestrand Grotto will go ahead like it did last year. It was really fun last year. And um, we had both the grotto with meeting Father Christmas and some Christmas elves. Um, but also there was a chance for people to meet an innkeeper and travel back in time 2000 years to the very first Christmas and discover what happened there as well. So again, hopefully because it's sort of socially distanced a grotto because you know, you're just a family at a time usually. We hope that will be able to go ahead. And finally, when do you think church services will go ahead? Well, church services are allowed now. My church opened up last week for the first time. It's just, it's quite small numbers because they have to be two metres apart. Um, so I think more and more churches are beginning to open up. You have to wear a mask and you can't sing. So it's not, it's not quite the same as it used to be. Mm. Um, but at least it is a way to, to be together and um, 
I don't know when normal church services will happen. That was probably going to depend on getting a vaccine and everything being being over. But at the moment, although it's a bit frustrating and sad in some ways, in other ways, it's quite good discovering things like Zoom, isn't it? Because yes. you and I live quite a long way apart, um, but we're able to talk to each other like this because of Zoom. And um, so I think we're a lot of us are getting better at technology than we used to be. And so I'm, I'm usually quite a positive person. So I try to look on the bright side and think, well, what are the advantages at the moment and how can we make the most of things um, even when stuff's a bit of a challenge? Well, thank you very much, Annie. Jake, lovely to speak to you and well done. And I'm honoured to be a part of your programme. Thank you very much. Bye. Annie Spears, everyone. Thank you very much for that exclusive on the escape rooms as well, Annie. Now it's time to take a trip to Positivity Corner. Positivity Corner. There are so many parents in Warrington struggling to homeschool because they haven't the technology to do it. So, who's going to help with that problem? Step forward, rugby league legend, Super Benny Westwood. He's been giving out 100 computers to homes across Warrington to help with homeschooling. And it puts a smile on kids' faces when Benny turns up at the door. Well done, Benny. Good lad. Thank you, Jake. That was so positive. Now it's time for everyone's favourite bit of the show. Take to the stage. Take to the stage. For this version of Take to the Stage, we wanted to show you one of the most amazing things we'd experienced during lockdown. Choir power. So to perform Bridge Over Troubled Water by Simon and Garfunkel, will you please welcome the North West and North Wales branches of the UK Rock Choir?
everybody! Give it up for everybody you've seen on this episode. The inspirational Annie Spears and the fantastic rock choir. I'll see you next time on the Jake Lindsay Show. Until then, be kind to one another. Bye bye. The Jake Lindsay Show. Thanks for watching. The Jake Lindsay Show. Hope to see you again. The Jake Lindsay Show. The Jake Lindsay Show. Thanks for watching. The Jake Lindsay Show. Hope to see you again. The Jake Lindsay Show. Thanks for watching. The Jake Lindsay Show.